Hey up me ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome to the Hermit's Cave. Just adjust my camera. That's the bells. I don't know if you can hear clapping, hold on. Probably a bit faint for you, but um, I should really come on at five past and and do the clapping. So we clap every, I don't know if it's every week, but certainly it was last week and this week. It's still going on down below in the, in the city, which is really nice. Let me pop open the chat. Last week we had fireworks, but it was darker last week because with the clocks change at the weekends, it's still light. So I'm not sure how effective fireworks would be this week, but. Connor, hello, this is a nice surprise. Oh, there are fireworks. You might hear fireworks as well as the cheers, claps and I hope you can hear it. Oh, I can hear it. Everyone is clapping here as well. Clapping all over the country. I almost feel like I shouldn't, shouldn't start my, uh, my broadcast without um, Great way to start my day at 3 p.m. Quarantine life. Hi, Simon and all. Fireworks here too. That's nice. Robin, don't lower the tone. Okay, I'm going to close my window now. What, what poignant and incredible and odd and sad and weird times we're living in. Um, hi, Theus, good to see you. So, as yet, fireworks here too. We've got fireworks all over the country, which is lovely, even though, like I say, it's not as dark as it was uh, last week. So, welcome to everybody. As you know, with the um, Throwback Thursdays, I just dedicate an hour... Um, because this series gets watched back um, quite a lot, you know, in, in the week, as opposed to other lives where it's more general chit chats like cup of ketchup, etc. So I try and keep it focused um, onto this. But if anybody does want to ask anything about the Llewellyn Tarot, because that's the tarot we're going to be looking at this week, then please pop it in capitals or start it with the Hermit's Cave. Um, so that I see it um, and I'll just do a collective welcome to everybody and um, we've got capitals here essence 818 listening and working at the same time hope everyone is staying safe and healthy mind and body by the way have this deck the only deck purchased for me my niece bought it for me oh that's lovely and spoiler alert I love this deck and if you've watched my channel for any amount of time since I've had this I was really late to the party on this deck I've only had it less than a year um, but I absolutely adore it I think it is one of the most beautiful decks ever created and and that's me setting my st stall out right from the beginning I think it is beautiful the watercolor painting is stunning it's very RWS, um, you know, and I've seen people who have completely removed borders and titles. I'll show you a comparison with a couple of cards that I've got. Um, and I'm thinking about modifying this deck. I don't mind the, um, the borders on this deck. I think they're quite beautiful and the size is nice. So I'm not sure whether I might get another one to mod, but... I could probably remove all the titles and know what all the cards are because they are so in keeping. In the majority, um, there's a few exceptions, 
with the RWS. So um, it's a great beginner's deck as well for that, uh, in that sense. So the Llewellyn Tarot, or if you are Welsh or living in Wales, you might hear it referred to as the Llewellyn Tarot because I learnt recently, and I just double checked with my friend tonight as well, because I didn't want to say anything wrong. You know, you're always kind of conscious about getting things right or saying the wrong thing. But when I went over to Wales last month, it's the month before now. Wow, is it? Or did it go March? But anyway, either February or March. Um, it was... Um, we went to Landudno, which is also starts with a double L, and my friend was referring to it all the time as Clandudno. And I said, how are you saying it? He's like, Clandudno. Um, and so I double-checked, you know, um, the Welsh would pronounce the Llewellyn Tarot as the Llewellyn Tarot, because uh, the double L is a cl cl sound. So um, I, hope I've, I hope I've done that justice. But for the purpose of this video, I'll be referring to it as the Llewellyn Tarot because everybody seems to know it as the Llewellyn Tarot. Um, it's been around for um, 14 years, 2006, um, I believe it was released. Um, and it was created um, because of, it, it was, to, it was in, in honour of the, the founder of Llewellyn Publishers. Um, who is somebody who emigrated from Wales to the United States over a hundred years ago. Um, and so around the hundredth anniversary of um, that, you know, that, that press, um, then the creator, Anna Marie Ferguson, was contacted. She'd got a tarot deck already out, I forget what it was called now, Legend, Legend Tarot, which was an Arthurian tarot. Um, she was contacted and asked if she would create a um, deck that was based around Welsh mythology. And she rose to the challenge and she created the Llewellyn Tarot and it, its release was done to coincide with 100 years of Llewellyn as a publishing company. Um, so that, that's quite interesting. Hi all here late, don't worry. Um, welcome, welcome. So yeah, so it's, it's a homage really to the, the founder of Llewellyn Publishing, uh, Llewellyn Press, um, a homage to his heritage, which is his Welsh heritage and it's steeped in, as I said, in Welsh mythology. Um, and whilst it's based around the RWS system, um, there are some changes to some of the major arcana, but it, uh, it follows the suits the same, as in we have one swords, pentacles and cups. Um, and it also has, you know, page, knight, queen, king. It has strength at eight and justice at 11. However, one little niggle, and it's only import important if you kind of follow the book and the book's interpretation. The book is phenomenal, by the way. Um, they do switch, and it's a pet peeve of mine, but they do switch the uh, wands and swords. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when I, I come on to the book. Um, so, yes. So let's, firstly, let's let's have a look at the packaging. And don't forget, if you want my attention, please, if you pop it into capitals, then I'll, I'll know to keep looking out for things. Now, because I've only had this deck, as I said, less than a year, I'm pretty sure I got one of the new Llewellyn packaging one with the magnetic closure. Um, and it's, it's, it's standard Llewellyn, what you get now if you buy the tarot deck and book sets. Okay, so on the front it says the Llewellyn Tarot um, and it just says Anna Marie Ferguson and this beautiful, beautiful image. On the side, the Llewellyn Tarot and at the end, Llewellyn Tarot. And then on the back you get some colour prints of the cards and this write-up. So it says, a time before Camelot. Um, bring in the Welsh myth to life. The medieval world of the Welsh is a very real, tactile, even rustic, 
with an other world that overlaps and infringes on reality's borders. Poetic, but rarely sentimental, the mortals anticipate and brace themselves for testing encounters with the shadow of the other world. To live within the reach of the supernatural is seen as natural and sometimes a blessing and sometimes a hazard. This mystic realism is, I feel, one of early Celtic literature's most appealing qualities. It is not fantasy, but organic reality seen on occasion through an imaginative lens in the same manner and beauty as the artistic tradition of the tarot. And that's taken directly from Anna Marie Ferguson, who is the creator of the Llewellyn Tarot and the author of the book. She does the deck and the book in this set. Um, I have the older one, Simon, that had the rubbish box. Yeah. And, um, hi, Nancy. Uh, and what I will say is the cardstock is pretty decent with this. You know how I've been saying how Llewellyn when they upgraded their box and their books, the card stock is pretty decent, but the book is black and white. Um, I would have thought they'd have been more in keeping with their new style and perhaps gone for a glossy colour book, but it hadn't when I bought it last year anyway. Um, did Llewellyn ever issue decks in plain, regular sized little tuck? Yes, there have been some in tuck boxes, yeah. Okay. So that's the box. The packaging is really nice. We don't have it split into two decks. We have this nice design, which also appears on the back of the cards. And it's almost like a coppery deep gold color. It's really beautiful uh, metallic. We get a little ribbon to be able to lift out the cards, which I'll take out. Um, and this is quite nice because it is sealed, so no cards can slip. This does come out if you want to take it out, if you want to keep them in a bag or whatever, but it's quite useful um, for storing cards. The book, as I said, is also written by Anna Marie Ferguson, and it is a treasure. It has this lovely, um, shiny, gloss cover this part is the gloss this isn't although this is embossed you can actually feel this so it's really nice quality as you can see here look so it has this nice overlay and even the uh, name at the bottom is raised up you can you can feel it um the book is 264 pages <clears throat> and there's a lot of information in here now the, the purpose of the deck is focusing on Welsh mythology, as I said. Um, and I don't mean any disrespect, you know, but you don't necessarily... I don't want people to think, oh, I don't, I'm not really interested in Welsh mythology or it's not something that appeals to me. It's not essential for using with this deck. You could still, you know, let me just show you, you know, it's so RWS you can pull something like the Six of Swords and it's still people crossing, you know, the water on the boat, going from a rocky or troubled waters to a calmer shore. It's, it's, very, it's very RWS. So um, it's not essential if Welsh mythology isn't your thing. However, the way the book is set out, um, it gives you... For the majors only, for the minors, you just get um, upright and reverse meanings and a, a couple of paragraphs or a paragraph of, of each. But for the majors, you get a lot of information. So, for instance, um, where are we? For the fall, um, you know, we get to find out who the fool is and you get pages of information about that character. Uh, and then you go to like the magician and the magician is Gwydion and you get all this information about Gwydion. And then it goes into the upright and the reverse meanings. So for the priestess is Queridin. Kerid, Kerid, 
Wynn, Kerry Wynn. I'm going to butcher these names and I'm not going to go through every card and say who they all are as well. Hermes Cave, did you ever find or own a tiny keychain sized tarot deck? I've been looking for one. A tiny keychain sized tarot deck. I've got a little tiny mini tarot deck that the lovely Jen sent me from Science to Soul. Um, so, so yeah, so you get all this information. I've tabbed a few bits that I want to, to read as well from this book because it's written beautifully. But let me just tell you about the contents first. So you've got your acknowledgements, you get a foreword by Carol uh, Llewellyn, um, a preface, Wales, the land of the red dragon, and the red dragon plays a part, which I'll tell you about when we get onto the cards. A chapter called The Noble Tarot, the language and nature of the cards, and some layouts as well. Um, but what's really easy as well, if you wanted just a quick at glance at who the characters are in the Major Arcana, then on the contents page it tells you as well. So it says things like, um, the Hermit is Merdin, also known as Merlin. Um, the Wheel of Fortune, Ari Ariatnrod. <clears throat> um, Death is Aaron. Um, Temperance, Keeper of the Well, for example. The Star, Bramwyn, um, Judgment, The Sleepers. So you can actually just have a quick reference guide as well if you wanted to, or, or just write them out from there. Um, so I just wanted to read this little bit, and this is from the preface at the beginning. And this is, um, where are we? Lost me place, bear with. Um, yeah, so this is written by um, Anne, Anna Maria, Anna Maria, Anne, <laughs> Anna Marie Ferguson. So she says, as, as a young illustrator and author, my first large project was Lad Legend, the Arthurian Tarot. So that was her first deck, which drew upon the legend of King Arthur and the Dark Age history of Britain. Having travelled the royal road of the tarot once before, I thought it unlikely to pass this way again. Yet, when Llewellyn Publications proposed this tarot as a special project to draw on Welsh mythology in, in uh, deference to the Welsh name of the publishing house, I was given cause to reconsider and then agree. In my choice of projects, above all other considerations, it has been my mission to reintroduce the old, lesser-known legends to a wider audience and thus contribute to my own small way to their future health as living legends. When done with care and in good faith, the marriage of a tarot deck and mythology can benefit both traditions. I am honoured to have been asked to create a work to bear the name of its publishing house, Llewellyn, and I am most pleased to be in the service of the Red Dragon. And I just, I love that when I read it earlier. I was reading through this book um, when I finished work tonight, and I just really, that really struck me, you know, to what an honour for a publishing house to say, can you make, create a deck to recognise our founder because it's a hundred years, you know, since we was established. Um, and then for her to go even beyond the legends of Arthur, which she was so uh, synonymous with, and to go into, you know, um, and she talks about Wales, the land of the red dragon. And I won't read it you all, but when she was describing the difference between the south and the north, and I only went to the north, and she was talking about the air and the mountains and the woodland areas. And I was really privileged to see that, you know, and it does have a very, very special uh, feeling to, to the land, the landscape of, of Wales. I've tabbed these for some reason, so let's see why. Oh yes, so <clears throat> they have swapped the um, wands and swords energies, which as I said, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine. 
but it's only important if you're following the book. Um, so she explains at the beginning, so the, the suit of wands, wands symbolise the power of the intellect and intuitive thinking. They represent accomplishment and success and full sense of evolved person or purpose, which contributes to the community at large. And then she goes on, um, and I just thought, you know. And then suit of swords. Swords represents action. They are the impetus to impact and interact with the world around us. Bravery, leadership and responsibility are symbolised by swords. I get what she's saying about that. Um, and I have heard arguments for and against, you know, well, swords are made in fire. They are, you know, created and heated up. And, but a wand, a wand is also force. You know, whether you're thinking of a wand like a club in the Marseille with, or a torch kind of wand, it's, it's fire and wand intention and, you know, it's... it's so I can't, I can't get my head around that. And I know a few deck creators have, have done that too, but um, the book is still fantastic and it's brilliant to read about each of the characters within the Major Arcana, why she's chose who uh, for what, etc. cetera. Um, did I wanna say anything else? Yes, um, there is a description as well. So even after you've read about the character, there is a description uh, before, only for the majors, for the, um, before you get the upright and reverse meanings. And she, she kind of talks about each one, about the traditional tarot and her version. So she'll say for the emperor, the traditional tarot imagery depicts a mature man comfortably seated on a throne. He is draped in red for vibrancy and strength and holds a scepter, symbol of male potency. And then she talks about her, hers. So it's a really, really good book. Really good book. Um, and, and well worth a read. Any comments? Have I missed any comments? I'll just quickly scan back. I don't think so. Good. I'm good to go. Good to go. Let's have a sip of coffee before it gets cold as well. Oh, that was a big glug, wasn't it? Um, anything else? No, so let's go on to the cards then. So the cards are larger than your usual Llewellyn deck. Um, they are quite, quite chunky. They're not, they're not too bad. They're not the thickest card, but they're not the thinnest card either. Uh, maybe older versions were even uh, thicker than this. Um, but they're, they're a nice a nice shape. They're eight and a half centimetres by 11 and three quarter centimetres. So they're a lot wider um, than your usual Llewellyn. Um, the backs are lovely. You've got this textured brown which reminds me of the inside of the box and these little kind of diamond shapes. And then you've got like this um, medallion, which is beautiful. And the whole card could be reversible if it wasn't for the fact that we've got the red Welsh dragon in, um, in the center. And I remember making my friend drive me past the sign that says, welcome to Wales. And then there's a big bridge with a big uh, red dragon on it. And we saw the red dragon a lot as we drove to Land now as well. Um, so, yeah, so the backs are really nice. I really like them, but they're not reversible because you can see if the dragon is the right way up or not. Yeah, so as uh, with regard to trimming, I haven't edged this or anything yet. And the reason why I've not edged this yet, because I will edge it, is I still don't know whether I want to trim or not. So let me show you first. Um, the borders. So the borders are quite nice. You've got the dragon again in all four corners. Um, you've got um, on the minors, you just get the, the title at the bottom you get the, the character, the name of the person on the top here. 
which is quite hard to read sometimes, if I'm, I'm being honest. Um, and I like re <laughs> Brand the Blessed is quite, quite easy to read. But some of them are quite, quite hard. And the, the writing's not that big. Um, but it's, it's nicely framed. And because these are beautiful watercolour art pieces, I do think it frames it quite nice. Uh, ripe for trimming, maybe. And, and some people struggle with the size of the card, so they have trimmed it. So this is what it looks like trimmed. So this is a trimmed card with the top taken off and the bottom title uh, staying on. So let me compare it with... The two. <clears throat> okay, so it does, and you don't lose too much on the back. The compass isn't centered anymore, um, but you know, the back's borderless, so it doesn't really matter, and it still fits everything in quite nice, uh, but there is a noticeable size difference when you chop it down, and then they become quite a small deck. They are quite a small deck that way. Um, I'll show you a couple more. So the Nine of Swords. I love the Moon card in this deck. Really beautiful. And the Magician. So they're quite, they're quite nice when they're trimmed down. And some people have taken it further and taken the bottom off as well. A bit like I've got with my Druid Craft. <coughs> I'm too lazy to trim says Claire. Um, so, I don't know. Okay. That deck is ruined. That's why I've only shown a couple of cards. It's ruined. Uh, not because of the trimming, but something was spilt over it. So, it needs, it's got to be thrown out. So, I'm debating whether to get another deck and trimming uh, one. Or just trimming it and living with it trimmed. I kind of like the idea of having a perfect one, though, as well. Um... So, yeah, so there, there is the importance of the, the red dragon. The red dragon in the centre, the medallion on the back, and in each corner. And, you know, the, the red dragon has been a symbol, um, you know, right since Celtic dawn for the Welsh people. Um, so it's, it's a very important, um, important symbol for them. All right, so let's have a look at the cards because we're already halfway through. I always seem to start on the cards around half past. I can gas, can't I? And I do want to be done for nine for Becca's uh, chat. Why have I got the King of Pentacles on the top? That's it from the bottom. So Petridor, like I said, I'm not going to mention every, <coughs> every name, but... <clears throat> Here's our fall. It's a beautiful card. I mean, we used to see it, aren't we? The, the, you know, not on horseback, but we, you know, we're seeing somebody on the edge of a cliff. The white dog. We talked about the fall in depth last night, actually, didn't we? When I did the, um, the April Fools, uh, Quarren stream. It's a lovely card. Gwydion is the magician. Look at the colours. Just look at that for magician card it is so beautiful rich and oh, beautiful flowers and greenery and the stone plinth i just love that card i tell you this is probably one of the the most beautiful tarot decks i'd love to get a big borderless version i, I wish they'd make a big borderless version Peregrine, again, very in keeping as well with the, the Magician card. She's kind of like part of the tree. There's all this kind of webbing around her, like spider's webs, but then it's kind of, she's part of the land. She's part of nature. You can't see where she and the tree separate. What was that? It's okay, I will start whenever. 
Oh, okay, Becca. Well, yeah, I like to be, I like to keep it to an hour anyway. But thank you. The Empress. I might take the time I have during lockdown to do a quarantine. A quarantine? You're going to do a video, Connor. You've seen our Al, haven't you, in that she's uh, YouTubing. Just beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Here's our Emperor. Again, we've got that red for power. The Hierophant is stunning. He's got a harp there, look. Kind of gives a whole new vibe, doesn't it, to the Hierophant. I ordered this deck an hour ago on eBay. What a coincidence. I love this deck, yeah. I love the lover's card. We get that, those red drapes, but look at the angel. It's embroidered onto the drapes behind. Not a video, just to reconnect with tarot. I'll become my own querent, so quarantine. I see. Why not? May as well, why you got that time? So much energy in the uh, chariot card. So even though we do get these uh, these names, you know, Manawidden, I think, Manawidden, you don't necessarily need them. You can still read the cards, can't you? Strength, I mean, look at strength now. Um, it's not missing the lion. You've still got this uh, lion's head here. But look, you've got all these strong animals and they're all plowing forward. It's a card that screams strength. Oh, all this songs tonight, Becca. Oh, we might be in for a treat. Hope it's nothing maudlin like in the ghetto and his mama cried. Love the hermit. Off key, Elvis. All right, Witch of Whimsy. I was trying. <laughs> I am a growler. This is the Wheel of Fortune, which is Ari Amrod. And she's on the cover of the of the box, which is gorgeous with this Celtic design here. Really beautiful. Not you, Simon, her neighbor. <laughs> I see, that's all right. Justice, beautiful. Hi, Jackie. love the hanged man it's like some um roman baths or something isn't it but hanging there from that little swing quite way off in the distance as well yes sparkling very earthy earthy pagan but you know it's celtic isn't it and it's taking us back to the land Death. Stunning. And you, you know, any one of these uh, pieces of art could be hanging on your wall, couldn't you? And people would walk in and say, oh, wow, what a fabulous picture. You know, she just, she just created this deck for the, on request, really. It's amazing. Temperance is beautiful. She's underwater. Took me a while to first notice that, but then you see the water above her and look at her hair. So she's, she's like emptying into a well that's already full. Hang Man is my favorite card. So this is another title change. So like, oh, did I mention the priestess wasn't the high priestess, she's just the priestess. Um, but the um, the devil card 
is the horned one. And it's amazing. Look at his, look at his horns. The tower. Wow, there's 108 people here. Welcome everyone. The star. Now I'm always kind of mm, about the star. Um, I like it, but uh, you know, out of the the three, the star, the star, the, the moon, and the sun, the star is one that never seems to be done well. Um, I'm always kind of a bit sort of about the star. This possibly is the best star card I've ever seen. I think it is breathtakingly beautiful. Just look at that. I love the standing stones in the background. The night sky, she's by the water. She hasn't got one foot in the water, but she's got one on the ground and one on the rock. It is just stunning. The moon, it's not traditional, but it's beautiful. And I remember, I think, Becca, did I, did I gift you this deck? I seem to, I remember, seeing this moon card and thinking Becca needs to have this. <laughs> I'm sure I did. Now if I didn't I'm gonna feel really bad and I will if I didn't. <laughs> but I know I thought it when I saw that card. Yes yeah, she did. And isn't that beautiful? Oh that intuition that we we associate with the moon. The sun, for those of you who don't like the ugly, creepy baby, we've got a fully grown male. But everything's there, you know, the red satch, sash, I should say, the horse, the sun, look at the sky. Highlight of subconscious mind. Just beautiful. Judgment, wow. Comes when you least expect it. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have the universe we don't have the world we have the universe which again no no great leap lots of uh, deck creators change the world card to the universe but it's beautiful the snowy landscape it's like at the end of the world the edge of the world looking into the expanse <laughs> Calm down, Claire. She's getting carried away with the character in the sun card. <laughs> so, the... Um, I don't know why, but I just feel that the miners still as beautiful, but the miners seem a little bit less busy and a different kind of art style um, compared to the majors. So, we have our Ace of Cups very traditional you know with our aces the hand of god um coming from the heavens so as i said it's very rws and as you see here our lovers in the card really beautiful but i don't know if you get what i mean the i don't know the art style just seems a little bit different still stunning doesn't you know add or take away I may be old, but I am not dead. Nobody says you was, Claire. <laughs> Our three maidens. I love this version. We've got a female now for the four of cups, which is nice. Notice there's no titles on the top now. So beautiful. I mean, look, it's so traditional, isn't it? But look at the detail now in the cloak. Six, the card of nostalgia and fond memories. These two children at play. Very traditional seven. So when I said at the beginning, and it wasn't meant in any way disrespectful, but you know, whilst this is a deck that's based on Welsh mythology, you don't have to 
understand necessarily Welsh mythology to work with it. You just need to perhaps understand the IWS. That said, the Welsh mythology aspect, and having the book as well, adds layers to it. It complements it. Look how beautiful that is. Beautiful Nine of Cups. And the Ten. So we get that family scene. They're embracing here, look. Rainbow and the kids playing. It's really gorgeous. Here's our page with his little fish. It's looks like Moses there, doesn't he? Walking, walking through the water. Night. The king and queen, and they really complement each other. You can tell they're water cards. I'll show them both together. Look, because they face each other. I really love that. The water energy. Beautiful. And it's not all the way through, but a lot of the, um, the colours lend themselves to the, uh, the suits as well. So we get lots of blues and silvers with the, the swords. We get fiery oranginess with the wands and pentacles. Even though the wands has now been switched, but I love this look. Reminds me of the kind of like um, the seasons. I think the Two of Swords is stunning in this card. In this deck, sorry. The Two of Swords in this deck is just beautiful. Three. A lovely court, yeah. Four of Swords, she's asleep outdoors. Sandra says she loves the moon and clouds in the Two of Swords. Yeah. And there's there's a, there's so much balance in this deck as well. A lot of the the male characters that are in the RWS traditional tarot have been replaced with females. I showed that one earlier, didn't I? But you know. Such a traditional, look at the land that they're going to in the, in the distance, through the mists. Seven of Swords. This is what, this is what we had in uh, Tower Play Date this week, wasn't it? Because I remember talking about the tents in the background, so quite in keeping. The Eight of Swords. Again, we've got that dark night sky. The design on the borders look 3D at the corners with the with the lions in the corners. Yeah. Quite a traditional nine. You prefer it naked? You prefer it the borders chopped off, Satya? I think I need two copies. <laughs> I like backups of my favourite decks anyway, but I like them framed and borderless. Our Ten of Swords. Here we have our page. And we get that charging knight with the swords. Now this time, for the Queen, she's facing him, but he's facing forward, so as we expect. But again, beautifully complementing each other. Yes, DD. Great for pathworking right now, isn't it? With any tarot deck, really. Um, and then we have our wands. So the wands have these lovely orange backgrounds. So it's strange that the book changed it because she's painted them. Don't forget, she's the, the author of the book as well as the illustrator. She's painted them with this fiery, kind of burnt sienna sky. Again, female, we get a balance. 
male and female, whereas we're used to seeing two males for the two and the three. Love this version of the Four of Wands. Look at the, the castle, the palace in the background. Five and six is very traditional on his high horse. Why is it that in some decks, the Queen of Swords is holding a head? Who knows? Not in a lot, but in some, yeah. Eight of Wands. Now that's interesting, isn't it? The Eight of Wands, we get so much more than just the wands uh, flying through the sky. We get these kind of deer below in these beautiful fields. I hear your bells, nice. That means I've got 15 minutes left. I'm doing all right. Nine of Wands is gorgeous. And that heavy burden of the 10. It has a very autumn feel. Yeah, well, autumn, the whole deck, you mean, or do you just mean the um, the ones? Because it's, to me, it's very fiery. So I don't, you know, agree necessarily with, with the book. This time, he faces her. Isn't it gorgeous? They could be sat side by side, couldn't they? In a ravine between two mountains. The sky matches up and everything. Even more so, I suppose, if it didn't have the border. Bye, Nanda. Okay, the final suit then. We have the pentacles. Look at that with a beautiful poppies look. Isn't it stunning? Two. <laughs> we got a couple of ships being tossed about behind him there. Three. Four. I think the Five of Pentacles is done really well. And there's so much detail, even in like the the cloak, the gown and everything. It's just really beautiful. I love the snowy scene, the snow on the, the branches. Seven. I love that on the two. I love this. Look at the little geese. It's just the little things. Really beautiful for our nine of pentacles. She's holding that bird. But look at look at the detail. She's got like a dagger at her waist. She works the land. And the family scene, the dogs, there's even a horse in this one. Gorgeous cards, yes, I agree. Page. Night. And the, the courts in each suit are uniformed together beautifully. And here's our king and queen of pentacles. Just stunning. I love this deck so much. Thank you for sharing it today, Simon. Do you have it, Nancy? Is this a deck? And I just, you know, I remember saying once on a chat somewhere, I don't, I don't have the Llewellyn Tarot. And everybody was like, you don't have the Llewellyn Tarot with all the decks that you have? 
so I was late to the party. Um, and I think I, I might have been put off because I heard it was... I didn't really connect very strongly with the author, the author in tarot. Well, they've got two copies, different ages of it. Um, and I thought, I don't really know much about uh, Welsh mythology. And, and you know, I didn't realise how, how fantastic the book was. And actually, you don't have to worry too much about that, you know. It's, it's a tarot deck uh, like any other, and it's beautiful. Um, lovely artwork in this deck. Nancy has three copies. Wow. I'll go bankrupt during lockdown. Three copies. One intact, one naked, and one with text only on the bottom. Yeah, you see, that's what I did with my Druid craft. I've got one intact, one naked, and one with text at the bottom. Maybe. Maybe over time. <laughs> It is stunning, and I do want uh, I, I do want to back up for it. Um, Simon's throwback Thursdays are deadly for my pocketbook. Uh, naked means totally trimmed off. So, a naked deck. Like I've got this one here, which is my Druid craft. This this is naked. So there's just the image. No titles remain. And if a deck is very much in keeping with RWS, then, um, you know, you don't really need to have it. I love this deck because I was able to edge it in this gorgeous colour that matches the backs. Um, and then similarly, um, if I can find it now, I think it's, oops. Yep, go making a mess in my Stonehenge bag is the one where it's two thirds naked, so the title is still left at the bottom. So the same deck, but with titles left on. And again, edged in the same the same colour so so maybe Nancy I'll join you <laughs> and do that I do really enjoy at the moment Celtic decks I'm really getting I think it says I get older um, I feel more connected to my land my surroundings you know being here in the UK um, I love and I think it's also since I went to uh, Glastonbury as well because that really connects you with the land something happened to me there and I'm a changed person which deck do you prefer the Llewellyn or the Druid craft oh they're just so different they're so different I call them naked <laughs> oh I think I heard the lovely clink of your Owens no it was my uh, oil bottles I told um, the lovely Judy Kerr Kathy Kerr, sorry, that I'd um, finished all my oils. And I, I was sure there was one more. And I was clearing out a drawer the other day and I found one that I'd not opened yet, which is Simon and Frank that she made for me. And it's, um, it's frankincense on a roller ball. Oh, and it's been a real... Oh, it smells amazing. Lifesaver at this time. And then the other one is dark amber, which is an oil um, for burning. So that's what you heard at Clinkin. My wooden oems are, are, are down under my display area. Anyway, uh, I've got a few minutes left. Um, I love both Llewellyn and Druid Craft. Yeah, and I'm so looking forward to Greenwood because again, that's a deck that's really speaking to me just over a screen. I haven't got the physical cards in my hand yet. They're on the way, but again, oh, love it. You are so correct, Simon. I feel in love with Italy and started to buy a house there. Yeah, I think we we have our roots, don't we? And as I was younger, you know, and I was living in America temporarily and planning to move there full time, I was not really, you know, I didn't feel that sort of connection like I do now. But in recent years, I feel very connected to the British Isles. 
And I think it's because I've seen a little bit now of Scotland and Wales. Still need to go see Ireland, but in time. All right, so next week, Throwback Thursday Choices. I pick Druidcraft over every deck, but it's personal choice, yeah. So as you know, this, this week, I should have said at the beginning, um, the, the Llewellyn Tarot won with 58% of the vote. So it was quite a bit closer this week with 42% of the vote going to Ethereal Visions. So Ethereal Visions will go up again for one more week next week. And um, what it's going up against is Joy de Vie. I probably said that wrong. Joy, joy, de vive. Or joie. Joie, that's how you say it. Joie de vive. Joie de vive. I knew I was saying it wrong. By Paulina Cassidy. So that's the choices next week. Joie de vive or ethereal visions. And I'll pop them up on my channel later. Why is Connor putting island? Island. He read our minds about Ireland. Okay. Joy de vie for me. <laughs> so we'll have to see. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to head off because it's five minutes until um, Beppa's live chat. So if you're hanging around and then I will see you in Becca's chat. If not, I'll be back on Saturday for a Bears Cave special. 4 p.m. here in the Hermit's Cave, Kelly Bear will be joining me and we're going to be talking about this thing that a lot of people are experiencing at the moment, which is around uh, tarot funk. Um, and we've got some tips and we're going to share our own experiences and just have a chat about why we might be experiencing tarot funk at the moment. So I'm excited about the Bear's Cave special. Me too. It's been a while. So... Okay, everybody, well, continue to stay well, look after yourselves, and until next time, go in peace, namaste, and blessed be.